All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. The headlines. Lok Sabha passes Citizenship Amendment Bill after marathon discussion. 311 MPs vote in favor while 80 oppose the bill. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says the bill is in line with India's centuries-old ethos of assimilation and belief in humanitarian values. Campaigning for the third phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand ends today. Government further reduces stock limit of onion for retailers to check hoarding. India calls upon more countries to join International Solar Alliance to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. And 13 South Asian Games come to close in Nepal this evening. India continues to dominate medal tally. Lok Sabha passed the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 after marathon discussion and division last night. In all, 311 members voted in favour of the bill and 80 members opposed it. The bill, among other things, seeks to grant citizenship to Hindus, Jains, Parsis, Buddhists and Christians who migrated to India till the end of 2014 from countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan due to reasons like persecution. However, the bill exempts certain tribal areas included in the 6th schedule and those falling under the inner line permit regime in the northeastern states. It amends the Citizenship Act 1955, the Passport Act 1920 and the Foreigners Act 1946 for implementation of its provisions. Replying to the discussion, Home Minister Amit Shah said the bill does not violate any provisions of the Constitution, including Article 14 that places all people equally before law. He said Article 14 does not rule out any amendment to the Citizens Act. किसी भी डाइमेंशन से ये बिल गैर संवैधानिक नहीं है ना आर्टिकल 14 का उल्लंघन करता आर्टिकल 14 में जो समानता का अधिकार दिया है उसके तहत मैंने पहले भी कहा कि रीजनेबल क्लासिफिकेशन के आधार पर कानून बनाने से आर्टिकल 14 में कोई रोक नहीं है मिस्टर शाह रिटरेटेड द रिलीजियस पर्सिक्यूशंस इन पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश एंड अफगानिस्तान who have expressly declared Islam as a state religion, necessitated the bill. He pointed out to the declining minority population in the three neighboring countries. He added Manipur will be brought under the inner line permit regime for the bill. He noted that all northeastern states have supported the bill and the concerns have been addressed. Earlier, initiating the discussion, Mr. Manish Tiwari of the Congress called the bill a monumental blunder, violating Article 14 of the Constitution. जो मूल भूत ढांचा है हमारे संविधान का जो ये कहता है कि हर कानून पंच निरपेक्ष होना चाहिए आज जो ये विधेयक आया है ये विधेयक उस मूल भूत आधार का उल्लंघन करता है मिस्टर राजेंद्र अग्रवाल ऑफ द बीजेपी एक्यूज द कांग्रेस ऑफ अपोजिंग द बिल बाय यूजिंग सिलेक्टिव इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ सेकुलरिज्म विद वोट बैंक पॉलिटिक्स इन माइंड Mr. Rajiv Ranjan Singh of the JDU supported the bill saying the minorities from the neighboring countries had to migrate to India illegally only due to persecution, though they also contributed to the freedom struggle before the partition. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed delight over the passage of the Citizenship Amendment Bill in the Lok Sabha. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said the Lok Sabha has passed the bill after rich and extensive debate. Prime Minister said the proposed law is in line with India's centuries-old ethos of assimilation and belief in humanitarian values. Mr. Modi thanked the MPs and different parties that supported the bill. Home Minister Amit Shah said the Citizenship Amendment Bill will allow India to open its doors to minorities from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan who are facing religious persecution. In a series of tweets, Mr. Shah expressed his gratitude to Prime Minister for making the bill a reality. Home Minister said this amended legislation by Modi government will extend persecuted minorities from these countries dignity and an opportunity to rebuild their lives. Campaigning for the third phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand will end today. 17 constituencies spread over 8 districts will go to polls in this phase on Thursday. Campaigning has reached its peak with star campaigners of various political parties crisscrossing the state. Our correspondent takes a look at the issues dominating the campaign. In the third phase of assembly election, main issues of campaigning are hovering around employment, education facility, increase in inflation, reservation for backward classes and women's security. 
BJP leaders are trying to capitalize on schemes and works of their government in the center and state. On the other hand, Congress, JMM and RJD Alliance is focused on criticizing the BJP government over problems of tribal people, youth and farmers in their public meetings and rallies. Jharkhand Vikas Morcha and all Jharkhand Students Union party are promising better prospects for people if voted to power. Dharmendra Kumar Rai, AIR News, Rachi. Vice President M. Venkai Naidu has advocated for including gender studies in the educational institutions so that children learn to respect and become sensitive towards people of all genders from an early age. He was speaking after inaugurating the FIKI Arise Conference 2019 on school education in New Delhi last evening. Mr. Naidu called for value-based education and said that education is not just for employment but also for empowerment and enlightenment of individuals and the society. Education must teach us way of life. Education must give us opportunities for self-respect and also self-employment and also better opportunities in life. Education is not for mere employment. Education is for enhancement of knowledge. Education is for enlightenment. Education is for empowerment. And lastly, education is also for employment. Mr. Naidu also called for reforming teaching and training systems to improve learning outcomes. Uttar Pradesh government has decided to deploy women police personnel in police response vehicles of dial 112 emergency services to ensure safety of women. Talking to AIR Additional Director General Technical Services of UP Police and in charge of dial 112 services, Asim Arun said, police response vehicles will drop women travelling alone late at night to their destination. More from a correspondent. Women police personnel will be deployed on 10% of the regular police response vehicles. This service will be available from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. to the women of the state. If any woman is alone at any public place in night and she feels unsafe, then she can dial 112 and take help of regular PRV who will escort them to their places. If need arises, then women can sit in those police response vehicles in which there will be two male and two female police personnel and reach safely at their destination. So she'll change this is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The government has further reduced the stock limit of onion to 2 tons from 5 tons for retailers as part of efforts to check hoarding of the kitchen staple. The decision has been taken to augment availability of onion in open market. Consumer Affairs Ministry informed the states have been asked to carry out immediate anti-hoarding operations. Stock limit will continue to remain the same for wholesalers. Importers will continue to remain exempted for imported onions. Country's largest lender, State Bank of India, has announced the reduction in its marginal cost of fund-based lending rate, MCLR, by 10 basis points across all one-year products. It will be effective from today. This is the eighth consecutive cut in MCLR by the lender this fiscal. The new one-year MCLR has been cut to 7.90% from 8%. The world observes Human Rights Day today. The day is celebrated on the 10th of December every year to commemorate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHR, which was adopted and proclaimed by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 1948 as the shared standard yardstick to protect human rights across the globe. The National Human Rights Commission has also organized a function in New Delhi today to celebrate Human Rights Day. President Ramnath Kovind will address the gathering as a chief guest on this occasion. NHRC Chairman Justice H.L. Dattu will release NHRC journals and DVD of award-winning short films on human rights. India's call upon more countries to join the International Solar Alliance, ISA, initiated by it to reduce the dependence on fossil fuels to meet the rising energy demand. Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar said four years ago in Paris when Prime Minister Narendra Modi and French President Francois Hollande launched the ISA, it was a new beginning. But now that the four-year-old child is running fast, but it must run faster because the need of the hour is that we must tap solar energy in a big way. Mr. Javdekar was speaking at a ministerial plenary yesterday on solar and small island developing states, making the sun shine brighter on the sidelines of COP25 climate conference in Madrid yesterday. He expressed happiness that over 83 countries joined the ISA in just four years. Listing out the aggressive manner in which India has expanded its renewable energy mix, 
The minister pointed out that five years ago, India has just 3 gigawatt of solar energy. Today it has 33 GW of solar energy and it is huge. He said India is going to achieve 100 GW of solar energy by 2022. That is in the next three years, it will add 67 GW more of solar energy. In New Zealand, five people were killed and eight others are missing after an island volcano popular with tourists erupted yesterday. Police said there are no indications that the missing people survived the explosion in the White Island volcano. Among the missing are tourists from Australia, the US, Britain, China, Malaysia, as well as New Zealanders who were acting as tour guides. Abu Dhabi has been selected as the world's leading sports tourism destination at the 26th edition of the World Travel Awards, WTA in Muscat. Our correspondent has filed this report. Abu Dhabi has been emerging not only as the Middle East leading business tourism destination, but also the destination for sports tourism. The World Travel Awards under this category bears testimony to that. Abu Dhabi shined as a premium destination once again for sports tourism in 2019 after hosting some of the world's top sporting events such as AFC Asian Cup 2019, the Special Olympics World Games, the UFC 242 Showdown and the Brazil vs. South Korea International Friendly Match. Kanchan Prasad, AIR News, Dubai. Thirteen South Asian Games will come to a close in Nepal this evening. Indian athletes continue to dominate medal tally on the penultimate day yesterday. India consolidated its top position with 294 medals, comprising 159 gold, 91 silver and 44 bronze medals. More from a correspondent. On the final day of games, athletes will compete for eight gold in boxing and one in judo. In squash, India will take on Pakistan for title clash in men and women team events. Women men's basketball team will play against Sri Lanka and women's team will compete with host Nepal in the final. Before the closing ceremony, Nepal and Bhutan will clash for gold in the men's football final. To promote sports, a friendly football match between members of parliament and government officials will also be played. Raj Kumar, for AIR News, Kathmandu. And now, for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to VC Pramod. Thank you, Abhishek. The Lok Sabha passing the controversial Citizenship Amendment Bill, CAB, which seeks to give citizenship to non-Muslim refugees from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, is the story that dominates headlines this morning. Lok Sabha passes Citizenship Bill amidst opposition outcry, says the Hindu. Triumph for BS Yediyurappa. BJP wins 12 of 15 Karnataka bipoles, informs the Asian age. On JNU protest, Hindustan Time writes, Police lati charge marching students. The paper says that a heavy deployment of police and barricades were put in place near Bikaiji Kama Place. Petrol price soars to 75 rupees per litre. Diesel crosses 66 rupees, marks the pioneer. Prime Minister at 34. Finland's Sana Marine makes history, notes the statesman. Banned for four years, Russia to miss Olympics, writes the Times of India. And finally, South Africa's Tunzi is Miss Universe 2019. Well, Mail Today reports that she beat around 90 contestants, including Miss India, from around the globe. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Pramod, for a look at today's newspapers. In some more news, in United Arab Emirates, driverless vehicles have been tested on 5G technology ahead of a planned deployment of such vehicles on roads, reported the Emirates News Agency. According to the agency, Hamad Obeid Al-Mansouri, the Director General of the UAE's Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, TRA, said they will expand 5G network to important sectors like transport, health and education. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Lok Sabha passes Citizenship Amendment Bill after a marathon discussion. 311 MPs vote in favour, while 80 oppose the bill. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says the bill is in line with India's centuries-old ethos of assimilation and belief in humanitarian values. Campaigning for the third phase of Assembly elections in Jharkhand ends today. Government further reduces stock limit of onion for retailers to check hoarding. India calls upon more countries to join International Solar Alliance to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. And 13 South Asian Games come to close in Nepal this evening. India continues to dominate medals tally. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.